Here on LWT, comedy of a different kind with Jimmy Cricket. Ladies and gentlemen, you're now looking at somebody beside himself with glee. <laughs> and the two of us are delighted. <laughs> the other day, I went to a bookshop, you know, and the owner recognized me. He said, come away from the window, people think it's a pet shop. <laughs> I said to the man, man, come here. Would you have a joke book? He said, I've seen your act, have you tried the British Museum? <laughs> I didn't take offense. I just smiled and slammed the drawer of the lid over his fingers. <laughs> he saw the funny side. Hmm. He stuck a ferret up my shirt. <laughs> then I smiled back and set fire to his overcoat. <laughs> but we parted the best of friends. He shook me warmly by the throat and I left. <laughs> I went to the British Museum. That was a mistake. They wouldn't let me out. <laughs> I didn't want to talk to the girl behind the desk because I can't speak librarian. <laughs> Then I saw it. I couldn't believe it. I was beside myself with glee. The three of us couldn't believe it either. <laughs> the official at the British Museum called me to him. He said to him, come here. <laughs> I went over and there it was. Folks, it was the answer to a comedian's dream. Never again would I have to worry where the next joke was coming from. I just stood there. I couldn't believe my contact lenses. You won't either because I brought it here. Hang on just a sec. That's the wrong side. <laughs> eh? but every joke in the world. I couldn't get the large one. <laughs> this is the pocket edition. <laughs> <laughs> that was a belter, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Teacher, Tommy, where was the Magna Carta signed? Tommy, teacher, the bottom left-hand corner. <laughs> this is a great one for the kids. A baby sardine and a mummy sardine were underwater, and they saw a submarine. And the baby sardine said, oh, look, mummy, a tin of people. <laughs> Motorist to passerby. Which is the best way to banger? Passerby, clutter with a bucket. <laughs> I'll be in her all night. I hope you haven't ordered your turkey. <laughs> you love this one? <laughs> what are you doing? Taking your back? You're overdue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick and tired of this. Stop moaning and get these planks nailed down. I'm not a joiner. You're taking advantage of me just because I failed to become the first man to reach the summit of Mount Everest by playing a xylophone. Stop moaning and get those planks nailed down. I've nailed them down. Then come over here. <laughs> ah, my grandfather. Good morning, sir. Very pleasant. A slight ground frost last night. I wouldn't know I sleep in a house. <laughs> oh. oh, quip. Jolly good. Uh, might I be of some assistance to you, sir? These handkerchiefs? Yes. They don't work. <laughs> handkerchiefs don't work? Oh, another quip. Most refreshing change to have customers who come in here with quips. I haven't come in here with quips. Oh. These handkerchiefs don't work. Never have I had such a complaint since this business was founded by my grandfather. <laughs> What's your grandfather doing on the roof? <laughs> I'm slightly perplexed. Uh, those handkerchiefs you purchased from here don't work. Allow me to show you.
Percy. Might I suggest sir, that perhaps your nose is... My nose is as sound as a pound. Oh. There's a fault in these handkerchiefs. Try them for yourself. If I'm touched by a human nose, try it. <laughs> <laughs> these handkerchiefs don't work. I'm baffled. Mr. Baffled. <laughs> Should I catch a heavy cold and use one of your ank handkerchiefs? I could finish up with an airlock. Airlock? I could be walking around like the hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> Never have I had such a complaint since this business was founded by my grandfather. <laughs> Still, the customer is always right. Perhaps you'd like to try our top quality handmade handkerchief, sir. Thank you. Mommy, have you had a good week? You're moving. Why? You're sitting on the cat. <laughs> What's Dad doing? He's just finishing his custard. He calls it sentimental custard. Why does he call it that, Mommy? He says it brings a lump to his throat. <laughs> Listen, how's his bunions? He went to the doctor, yeah? The doctor said they were very bad. He's made an appointment for him to see the blacksmith. <laughs> <laughs> he what, Mammy? He had another one of his dreams. What did he dream this time? He was Tarzan swinging through the trees collecting coconuts. <laughs> when you woke up, all the brass knobs were missing from the dead. <laughs> oh. Listen, I rang you last Saturday night, but there was no reply. You were at a fancy dress party. Oh, that's nice. Cousin Flory went as an Edwardian lady. She put her bustle on back to front and her mammy fainted. <laughs> oh. Yes, mammy. Oh, yeah, the show's great. All the seats have gone. We've no idea who took them. <laughs> but I've got to go now, mammy, because I've got to get makeup on. Well, no. Everybody in TV has makeup, mammy. What do you mean I ought to be ashamed of myself? <laughs> well, I know Dad didn't have makeup when he was in the television. But they don't stop to put makeup on you when you're found outside a post office with a baseball bat and a bag of money. <laughs> All right. Okay then, Mommy. Bye then. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> 